Gideon Rosner here, Director of Policy with the Institute of Public Affairs, coming to you from day two. Now, today mostly consisted of hearing from the defence for Chris Murdoch, the barrister acting for James Cook University. The first thing that JCU tried to establish was that Peter was impugning his colleagues and engaging in derogatory and personal attacks on his colleagues in his conduct, writing, for example, the IPA's publication, Climate Change, The Facts 2017, and more importantly, in Peter's claims on Sky News that institutions like the Australian Institute of Marine Science couldn't be trusted. But Peter did a very, very good job in the witness box in sticking to his guns and not giving an inch. Uh, so I don't think that Chris Murdoch and JCU made much headway there. One of the arguments that we found out that JCU is trying to rely on is this absurd idea that Peter Reid wasn't protected by the relevant academic freedom clauses in his enterprise bargaining agreement because according to JCU he wasn't commenting on matters that were within his area of expertise. It looks today like JCU have actually abandoned that argument. During cross-examinations uh, Murdoch, acting for JCU, didn't once put that idea to Peter Ridd, so it looks like that part of their case has actually collapsed. But what's been extraordinary today is the content of the affidavits that have just right now entered the public domain uh, that have been filed by JCU. Incredibly, uh, Chris Coughlin, who is the Deputy Vice-Chancellor of James Cook University, tried to suggest that Peter Reid was not a distinguished academic and was therefore not protected by the Academic Freedom Clause. That is an utterly absurd, in fact insulting argument. Peter Reid has been an academic at James Cook University for 30 years. To suggest that he was not a distinguished academic at the university and therefore is not covered by Academic Freedom Clauses is insulting and disingenuous in the extreme. So after Peter had finished giving evidence to the court, we then moved into the closing arguments for JCU. Now JCU still seems to be arguing on the basis that the academic freedom clause as contained in Peter's enterprise bargaining agreement should be construed narrowly. Incredibly, we heard from Chris Murdoch at one stage that, quote, the academic freedom clause contained in the EBA is not as wide as uh, the applicant, that is Peter, would have you believe. Now that's an extraordinary thing for a university to be saying. This is a university, a public institution of intellectual inquiry. They should be proudly saying that the academic freedom clause is absolute. So at this stage, we're still waiting to hear the closing arguments from Peter, represented, of course, by Stuart Wood QC, after which time the court will adjourn and will await a decision from the judge. If you are interested in this case and in Peter's fight for freedom of speech on climate change, please head to www.ipa.org.au forward slash Peter Reed.